Okay, so now we're going to make the boundaries around our game so that our ball can bounce off those boundaries and stay in the playing area. I'm going to start down here at the bottom left hand corner and I'm going to click just outside our playing area and choose create. For type, I'm just going to name this bottom wall and for name, again, I'll just do bottom wall. We want to make sure it's not movable but is solid. And we want to make sure there is no friction which will ensure the ball bounces off the wall smoothly. So instead of the default of 50 for friction, I'm going to click the slider and drag my mouse down. I'm trying to get that to zero. You can leave this shape rectangle. It really doesn't matter what it looks like. But to keep it clean, I'm going to change my bottom wall to all black. Choose OK. Of course, we want to clone it. I'm not going to clone it all the way around the game. I'm just going to clone it across the bottom wall. Let me go ahead and choose OK. Again, choose Clone, and then just fill in the space across the bottom of our game. OK, now I'm going to click Done Cloning. Again, I can click on a square and just ensure that the type and friction stayed the same. Each block still has its own name identified by a number, which is fine. Now we're going to click OK. We're going to do this wall over here. I'm going to call it the right wall. Some people might call it the back wall, or if we have another paddle playing, which is the computer's paddle, and we hit this wall, we might call it computer score because the ball got past our paddle on the right. I'm going to, again, just call this right wall, just, just to keep it simple. I'm going to click here, choose create and name this right wall. Again, it doesn't really matter if I give the name right wall right here. So we don't want it to be movable and we do want it to be solid. And again, we want to bring the friction down to zero. I'm going to change this shape to rectangle. And again, I'm going to do a solid black box to represent our right wall. You can do something totally different if you'd like. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to clone across the right side. Continuing to move forward, we're going to do the top wall. So instead of continuing to click, I need to come down here and choose Done Cloning. Do not forget to click Done Cloning. Otherwise, when we set our logic or code later, if the top wall had the same properties as the right wall, then what would happen is every time the ball hit the top wall, it would count for a score when it really shouldn't count. If we, we just need it to count when the ball bounces off the wall over here on the side. Make sure you click Done Cloning, and we're going to go ahead and start another wall. I'm going to call this one Top Wall. We want to make sure that we can leave these default settings done, but we need to make sure our friction is set to zero. And again, that just makes sure the ball bounces smoothly off the wall. And we want to change this shape to rectangle. Then click here to edit. Again, I'm going to do mine black. Choose OK. And we're going to clone it across the top. All right, last but not least, we're going to set up our left wall. We first need to come down here and click Done Cloning. We're going to start here, choose Create, and I'm calling mine Left Wall because I called the opposite wall Right Wall. But again, you can set it up so you can call this Player Score. For example, if you have the ball hit the wall and get past a computer paddle, assuming we had a second paddle here. Again, for me, just to keep it easy, I'm going to call it Left Wall. I'm going to bring the friction to zero, change the shape to rectangle, and click to edit this sprite. Choose OK, choose OK again, and then clone this down the left hand side of our game. OK, so now we've created the boundaries for our game. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and code the paddle. See you in the next video.